Sonic. Lab. TV. We're going to look at some A to D and D to A's today, and uh, with the help of uh, Golf Raps producer Will Gregory, uh, he's actually one half of the band, but doesn't go out on the road anymore and uh, pr prefers to spend his time in the studio where he cultivates their a unique sound. Um, he was in the market uh, for a new set of D to A's and A to D's, and uh, we procured uh, three for him to have a look at, and um, this is what he said. Um, we've just been using an O2R to do everything, and I mean, O2Rs are good workhorses, but they're not state-of-the-art, and you can tell quite easily the difference between, you know, what you recorded and what you're playing back. So, yeah, we were looking to find something that would upgrade um, our whole digital to analog world, and most importantly was the A to D, you know, so that what you record gets the best possible chance of being faithful to what you recorded. And um, also we wanted something so we could monitor back because what I'm planning to do is to send the sound out into a nice old analog mixing desk. The first one we're going to look at, this is the lowest um, price point, and this is the Digimax FS from Presonus. And it features eight mic line pre's, each with individual gain controls, uh, switchable phantom power, in groups of four. So you can use this as a sort of mic pre for live recording if you like. Um, it converts them into ADAT channels. Now uh, the reason it's got four ports is because it goes up to 96 kilohertz and it uses something called SMUX which kind of distributes it over a pair of ADAT cables. So you can go up to 96k 24 bit but you have to use both sets. And most, most uh, digital audio interfaces will understand this, although not all, so you, you want to watch out for that. Um, what makes this one slightly different is it's got lots of extra ins and outs. Um, and you've got insert points on all of the eight channels, so you can patch in compressors, EQs, or whatever. You've also got some direct outputs, which uh, are effectively split, if you like. So that would be post preamp, post insert points, so that if you wanted to monitor these via zero latency, you could return them back to, a, to a, a mixing desk or whatever. Then you've also got an eight additional input outputs which take their feed from the ADA input. Um, so there's, it does quite a lot, really, um, based on quite a slim unit. Now, um, you can actually you can clock this from internal clock or external clock. It retails at 589 UK pounds at 79995 US dollars. So it's it's quite an affordable system. The next eight channel interface we're looking at is the Apogee Rosetta 800. This is a chunky 1U 8 in 8 out system. Uh, it basically takes all its connectors on D types. So it has analog in and analog out eight channels plus another loom for AES. These are fairly standard. You can usually buy these looms from Megami and various other places. They're pre-wired. The pin configurations are fairly standard. It's got ADAT I.O. Again, it's got two sets for the SMUX standard, so you can go up to uh, reach higher sample rates. The thing that makes this different is it's the first of the units that takes you up to 192K. So 192K, 24-bit, this will go up to. And um, what it does feature is its UV22HR output resolution dither. It also got soft limit, which stops you clipping the inputs. This also has an expansion slot, if you just like to look here. Um, we haven't got one in here, but uh, it comes with several options for expansion. Uh, one option is a Pro Tools HD card, so you can use this with your Pro Tools system as a direct interface. You just plug it into the mix card and a Pro Tools mix card. It's got Pro Tools mix and Pro Tools HD cards. There's also a Firewire option which allows you to control, uh, connect this directly to an Apple computer. Uh, I think there's a PC drivers as well, so this becomes your audio interface. Um, this is considerably more expensive than the Presonus, and you know it, it, it comes with a pedigree. The Apogee name is considered very highly. The Rosetta retails at just under $3,000 for 8-channel I.O. That's without any additional cards. Um, in the UK, you can expect to see it for about two and a half grand, 2469 I saw it for. Okay, the last interface uh, in, our, in our trio is the Lynx Aurora. This is a, another 1U system. Uh, the thing that makes this different though is it's got 16 ins and outs, so it's a 16 IO A to D and D to A converter. 
This also goes up to 192K, so I mean it should be fairly future-proof, just like the Apogee. This again has an expansion slot. Uh, in this expansion slot, we've got an ADAC card because uh, the system that we'll be listening to um, is, is, is ADAT-based. Okay, at, once again, if you come see the back, same D-type connectors for analog ins 1 to 8, analog out 1 to 8. These are all on the same standard pinout D-type D connectors. Uh, same for the AES connectors. You've also got a word clock I.O. There is actually a MIDI I.O. on this, which is uh, an interesting difference, because what the Aurora offers is additional mixing and routing capabilities that you can get to via MIDI. The Aurora 16 is 3,899 3, bucks or about 2,300 UK pounds. The HL version is about two and a half thousand dollars, two five nine nine, I believe, and round about fifteen ninety nine UK. For our listening test, we took a Krell KAV three hundred CD up to the Goldfrapp studio. We took the SP diff out and fed that into the Yamaha O two R digital input. And then we took the analog out and fed that into the recording interfaces one by one, and returned that via ADAT into the O two R ADAT slot. Um, that way we could AB between the two sources, um, the only difference being the actual A to D conversion. Will felt this was necessary because he likes to make sure that he's got as neutral a sounding A to D um, and gave him a much clearer idea of what was actually going into the system. The monitors that we were driving were um, the Goldfrapp ATC SCM 20s which are very clear, very very good stereo and good uh, in a good range. They're not very vibey but they are very crystal and um, a system that they're extremely used to. Um, so first we asked Will what he thought of the Apogee Rosetta AD800. Yeah well the Apogees are um they are in a very industry standard, aren't they? Lots of people use them, lots of studios use them. Um, they're kind of, they seem to be in the standard bit of kit that went on the end of a Pro Tools rig if you didn't have the Pro Tools converters. You felt that, yes, you were gaining this kind of slight more present, crisp sound, but you were losing some kind of definition in the middle um, into the bargain. So, because I was thinking, well, maybe it's good, maybe people use Apogees because they colour the sound in a good way, in a musical way, in a way that you want um, you know, the music enhanced. But actually I was thinking, well, I don't really want bits taken out of the music kind of in a random way and stuffed on another frequency, you know, just because that's supposed to be a more musical process. So in the end I think we thought, well, it's very close, but it's not exactly the same. And um, that's not really what we want. Next up was the Lynx Aurora AD16. Now it's fair to say that the Apogee and the Lynx were in similar price brackets, but the Lynx you actually got 16 IO with for your money, so it was, uh, represents better value in terms of just straight holes in and out. Well, we couldn't seem to tell any difference um, from what was coming out of the Corral straight and what was coming through the Lynx. We really couldn't. It seemed to be virtually identical. Um, it was that thing where was it, you know you didn't know which what was happening when you were switching between A and B. You couldn't really tell. Uh, whereas with the Apogee, you know, you definitely heard something moving about in the upper mids and uh, and the other device we tested, the Presonus Digimax. Digimax. Um, there was a kind of definite uh, stereo width issue where it was sort of moving about, not quite, not quite as wide uh, a sound, and definitely different. I mean, not really bad, you know, not like you're saying, not like listening to an MP3 or something, but definitely not as Expensive. Yeah, not, not as kind of identical. And I think with the Aurora, we thought, wow, it really does sound very, very similar. Um, you'd be hard pushed to, to tell the difference. Next up uh, was the Presonus Digimax FS. Uh, the thing about the Presonus is it's also got eight Class A mic pre's and, it's, uh, and a number of in and out options. So it makes it quite a useful addition to any ADAT equipped digital studio. I mean, I definitely wouldn't dis disregard the persona, especially if you're on a budget and especially if you need mic amps, because it comes with eight really nice Class A mic amps. Um, and again, it may be that on the way in, if you're coming in on mono, which you normally are, you know, you're coming with a vocal or you're coming in with a, you know, a, whatever it is, a guitar through an amp or a bass, then, you know, the stereo isn't an issue. I'd just like to say thanks very much to Will for taking part in this test and also thank you to Howard Jones of HHB uh, in the UK for supplying us with the equipment. Mm -hmm.